if Carrie Fisher is in it, I'm going to watch it. And I'm kind of pleased that that's my philosophy in life because it introduced me to the 1977 film Come Back Little Sheba. And this is based on the play. There was also a previous film in the 50s which apparently did very well for itself. I haven't seen it, but I have some issues with this film. I, I enjoyed it generally for the most part, um, but there are a few things I didn't think were done very well. So I'm very keen to go and see the previous film to see if they are unique to this film, if they've changed certain things about it, or if that's something that's written in the play and set in stone for the narrative. So I'll talk about those in a moment. I'm not going to give any spoilers though. So this is directed by Silvio Narizano, written by William Ing. Inge? Please correct me if I've mispronounced that. And stars, of course, Carrie Fisher as Marie. And Laurence Olivier as Doc and Joanne Woodward as Lola. And the narrative... The narrative is a little bit all over the place. And I'll be honest, not a lot happens for the first half of the film. The description from IMDb is as follows. An emotionally remote, recovering alcoholic and his dowdy, unambitious wife face a personal crisis when they take in an attractive lodger. That's not... For this film, that's not quite correct. And I'm wondering if they've changed some of the narrative quite a bit. If you know, feel free to let me know. I will endeavour to find out. But basically, Doc and Lola have a lodger, Marie. Marie is a young college student. She's an artist. And we as viewers know that she keeps sneaking in her boyfriend. But he's also invited to the house sometimes. And Lola becomes quite, I wouldn't say infatuated with him, but very enthusiastic about him. She's very lonely. You know, she engages the postman in conversation. She's got a neighbour next door um, with whom she tries to start up a conversation quite frequently. She's definitely a lonely woman who needs people around her. Doc, on the other hand, as it said, recovering alcoholic. He hasn't had a drink in, I believe he said, one month short of a year obviously out of the house quite a lot because he is a doctor but when he's at home he's not necessarily emotionally engaging with his wife and that's basically all that happens by which I mean nothing happens we set the characters up for a good 45 minutes and there is this constant constant kind of intensity maybe tenseness floating in the air you know something's going to happen but you don't quite know what it is and to be honest, I thought, okay, there, there will be spoilers from now. I can't say any more than that without giving spoilers, but I will say that something happens once the action kicks in. And it's the technically the straw that broke the camel's back, but I thought it was a very weak, pathetic straw that didn't really explain the actions of a character very well. The pivotal actions that changed the direction of the narrative, there wasn't really much of a setup. It just came out of nowhere and I feel like it's poorly developed within the narrative. So I'm hoping that they cut bits out of this from the play and the play makes more sense. Spoilers from now. Marie is a character I absolutely love. I think Carrie Fisher did a great job. Quite a well-rounded character. Turk I didn't mind but I didn't trust. Didn't really care about him at all. I felt like he could have had a more prominent role in this. Obviously the main narrative revolves around Doc and Lola. Lola is the one who I thought would flip or who would do something. With this tension that was always in the air, I thought it was going to be with regards to something she was going to do or something that was going to happen to her. So obviously when Doc fell off the wagon, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of was something that we could have seen coming, but I again, assume that it would have been as a result of something his wife did. Now, you could argue that he feels a lot of negative emotion towards her because of what happened to their baby, and that's technically because of his wife. Not not what happened to the baby, but, I mean, you know, he resorts to drink again because of what she represents to him. But I just, obviously... With Marie representing this youthful energy and the fact that she's got her whole life ahead of her and will probably have a family. And Doc just kind of flipped. And yeah, I'm sure these feelings have been building up in him for a very long time. 
and while he's being sober, he's not being, you know, it's not for want. Uh, his mind has been struggling, even if he's physically been coping. But this isn't explained very well in the film. It leaves a lot to, you know, to, for you to make up your own mind. There's no real suggestion of this. It's all theory. And I feel like they could have done a much better job of planting those seeds, even a little bit earlier on. Because I feel like it came out of nowhere. And it makes it seem like the narrative's very poorly developed. And maybe even the character's quite poorly written because his outward actions don't reflect his internal thoughts. But it also doesn't seem like he's hiding anything internally either. So there's no representation there that I feel is genuine. Not on the acting. I'm not saying Laurence Olivier did a bad performance. I, it's the writing of the character or the way in which that this film has taken this narrative. Again, I don't know. So when he took to drink, um, I will say Lola's reaction to that was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic response. Very well written there. What I don't like about this as well is the title, Come Back Little Sheba. I'm not sure what Sheba's meant to represent. Part of me thinks that Sheba's meant to represent the baby that they lost, but why? Because the baby represents the baby. Why would you kill off this woman's baby, take away her chance of being another, give her a dog, and then take away the dog, all before the narrative begins? What's the point in that dog? Why would she need to long after a dog when she could just do it for the baby? I'm not really sure what the point of, and maybe if it was a sub-narrative, fair enough, but it's the title of the play. So I feel like it was trying too hard to be clever and to put some more context in where it wasn't needed. I feel like if Lola had paid more longing to this child, or for this child, rather than the dog that was missing, and I also feel like Doc's treatment towards this dog just didn't work really well. Obviously, Sheba can represent... Um, a lost youth. It was a puppy that ran away. Marie also represents youth with her whole life ahead of her. And that is something that Doc, again, no longer has. These are all catalysts that could make him flip and go back to drink. But again, I'm speculating. None of this is hinted at. None of this is what the film is telling us. That's my interpretation. And one person's interpretation will be different to another person's. So is it a good film? Well, it's well shot, very well acted, beautifully cast. The narrative is interesting, but underdeveloped. Is that the film or is that the play? I don't know. I'd like to find out because I might want to see this on stage at some point to see how it, the staging is done um, and how they manage the passing of time. But for this film... I don't feel like they successfully portrayed the emotions of the characters. I don't think the characters had the opportunities to do that properly. And that's a shame, because if they gave it a bit more substance and a bit more meat and threw in a few more questionable situations, it would have had a lot more to it. So it's not bad, but I'm left with questions. I'm left with gaps in my knowledge, particularly of... Doc's feelings and emotions and reasons for his actions. There are certainly questions, there are gaps, but it's not bad. And because I watched it for Carrie Fisher, obviously just need to say, she's absolutely beautiful in it. For her, it was certainly worth the watch.